All right, now that we got all the roof trusses put up there on the last video, I'm just taking off the old sheeting finally since it's near the end of June. So I figured it was probably finally safe to take this off and chance that it's not going to rain on me. Um, we'll find out here in a little bit if that came true or not. But right there, my neighbors are yelling at me for making all so much noise, taking the cutting that metal there but yeah so i just chatting with them now they're good people they were just poking fun but uh yeah it was, it was nice to have this electric uh cutter that i bought uh, last year it makes it go by a lot faster than just using tin snips or a sawzall uh, with a metal blade so yeah but i was just using a, a dust mask there because cutting that off there was a bunch of uh you know tree debris up there is all going in my face so but anyway we'll give it a breakdown here in a second all right we're up here on the roof we're gonna do some work on this just got rid of one layer of tarp and then we have this stuff here I'm gonna keep it on here for now even though I think the rains finally have stopped for the season but just in case um, I do have to put some proper sheeting at the very end but all this is good but yeah we're gonna work on going this direction now so let's do it so we're heading back up on the roof here and as you can see I'm, I'm taking out a four by four sheet there because I had the you know I stopped the roof at, at an even space there but um, these roofing sheetings you're gonna want you want to have them off center so I had them off centered by a half a sheet so just they those four by four sheets were just uh, temporary. So I think when I was going forward, I, I think I stopped at one point and almost forgot. Actually, I think I did forget. And then I put a few sheets on and had to take them back off and rearrange them. So didn't want to repeat that. But yeah, just uh, trying to get this all finished to get the sheeting all the way to the back end. So we can have a roof on this thing and get me moved in at one of the one of these days. I will say it was nice to have the tree shade up there for sure. Um, I have cut down a ton of the trees um, because I don't want the fear of them falling on my house. And I don't like it to be super dark in the wintertime, but I do, I will miss the shade during the summer because I, I am cutting down any tree that pretty much has a possibility of falling on my house. But anyway, so here we are just throwing these sheets up there so I can move them into place and screw them down later. And I am glad I went with the 3 8 inch sheeting instead of half inch. Um, partially for cost, but mainly for weight. And yeah, throwing those 3 8 up there, not so bad. And then I was just cutting those sheets because it, it takes, I think, three 4 foot sheets wide and then just over 2 feet to get as far as I, you know, wanted uh, on the end here it could just have a little bit of an overhang um, my trailer is technically 14 feet wide but uh, it ends up being just under but with the overhangs I think those sheets were just over 14 but we'll give you a, a breakdown of all that good stuff here in a second all right I had a couple of tree guys come today and they took out two big ones there a big one there Two big ones here and a big one there and I was hoping that they would at least get those alders done and these alders done but that's all they were able to get so I'll have to have them back and spend more money I don't want to spend but I can't be cutting these big ones that want to lean onto my house myself so got to do what you got to do sometimes right so anyway they were good guys I just wish they would have done more. But these ones are out of my league, so we'll get them. We'll get them down. Just when you're like, ah, it's like June 28th. Eh, don't worry about the plastic on the roof because it's not going to rain anymore for the summer. Yeah, look at this. Good stuff. Just a dripping. Just a dripping. So crazy. It was literally 96 degrees yesterday. The same Florida. It's like 60 degrees today. This is out of control. Oh well. Hopefully no wildfires this year. 
Happy America Day weekend, y'all. Just sitting here reloading my ammo belt here for the self-feeding uh, screw gun I got. So for the subfloor, we're going to go see if I can put these little screws through that uh, gun and uh, secure the uh, roof sheeting uh, better and faster. So we'll see if this works out. But for now, I've been here a couple times and I didn't bring my camera, so I'm just showing you a little quick review of what I've done. But we finally finished all the sheeting all the way to this end and got this uh, outer roof truss um, secured, so that was all good. And now I just have like a few screws in each one of the sheets to at least hold it in place, but now we're going to get it down tighter and let's see obviously took this plastic sheeting off and then you saw the monsoon video i'm sure and uh or i'll show it here in a minute of it raining with the plastic off but other things i've done was i just put in a few of these finally put in a few of these nail plates here and there on these rim joists i had done it properly with the with a uh, hydraulic makeshift press thing I did with a couple of these. But they were really hard so uh, to put in, so I'm just going with the nailing. And I'm going to go inside here. And the other day, I picked, or yesterday, I picked up this from a guy for free. Um, it was, uh, it's for the line set cover for my mini split AC heat pump. And I'm going to, I just ordered it. I'm going to go pick it up in Portland so I don't have to pay taxes on it because it's a couple grand. I'm going to put the unit right there, the head unit, and then I'll probably put the pump outside right here. Um, yeah, so we got that done, or we'll pick that up here in a few weeks. But I also finished up all the roof trusses back here and finally put all the sheeting up there and got the final roof truss out there. I still have to trim the sheeting out there to make it proper. Well, yeah, I got all that done. And that's about it. So yeah, so we're kind of caught up here and maybe we'll give you some more footage of what happens next. All right, we'll see you. So I just using a chalk line to figure out where I think the roof trusses are so that I can uh, use my fancy screw gun there to hopefully hit them in most spots so I can get that uh, roof sheeting firmly uh, tied down and it also strengthens up all the roof trusses by tying them all together and I did bring my camera you know my good camera that day but the battery was left at home so I'm just using a knockoff GoPro and it wanted to fall off the camera stand so we just gave you a little bit of footage of this so but anyway so on to the next aspect of the project so what I'm doing here is I got all my sheeting up there and it's coming out about three and a quarter inches um, I don't know why I decided that I've well I thought that like I would put two two by fours thickness of wood in to uh, you know give it a little bit of an eave and then a quarter inch for the siding which the siding is three eighths inch anyway but I'm going to be putting a half inch rain screen on there so it should have really stuck out like three and I don't know three quarters plus um, out almost four inches but we did what we did and uh so i'm just gonna put the two by threes up there on the outer edge and then after i put the siding on with the rain screen i'll i'll shove in a piece that'll go you know in the gap there in just little chunks because we still need airflow going through for the rain screen but yeah so we're just gonna take these long two by fours bring them up there and screw them in from the the top down so we'll go do that all right, we got my first one on here. Look at it down there. I think it's a 10 foot section there. And what I'm doing is just using a clamp here in the middle section and holding it on and then screwing on the end caps or end pieces and then working my, I'll uh, put one on this side, one on that side and then work my way back. And that's how we do. So yeah, since I forgot the battery for my camera that day and I just had that cheap uh, GoPro on knockoff and being on the roof there on the edges, it just wasn't, you know, there wasn't really any good angles to give you any footage. So just gave you the breakdown of that. 
but here's just some old drone footage of cruising around the edge of my neighborhood on the Puget Sound and so hopefully you enjoy it and it's a pretty cool little part of the country to live for sure and this little inlet's pretty cool when the tide's going in or out it really looks uh, like a river even though you know it's the ocean but my neighborhood is right here on the left on the right side is outside of my neighborhood and we just have a little park on the corner there where I'm bringing my drone in for a landing that we all have common access to this little green patch right here and so yeah hope you all enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one all right y'all take care bye bye